Howdy. It's uh it's been a while since I've given you guys an updated version of my Cyber Dragon deck profile. And when I say a while, well, I really mean a while. But in my defense, we were kind of going through a deck drought uh, in the last couple of formats. For me personally, it was right after the Anaconda uh, and Aurorodon ban. Now, the Anaconda ban really wasn't the problem. Like, we knew that that card was going to go, and we had ample of time to figure out what we're going to do without the card. I remember when the card was first banned, there were a lot of Cyber Dragon players out there saying, that's it, it's over, we, we, you know, it was a great ride, but people are kind of forgetting that there were alternative ways of playing Cyber Dragon. Some methods are a little bit better than others, but there's no doubt in saying Anaconda didn't really help, because the reality is it did. However, as I've stated before, the Anaconda ban didn't bother me. What really irked me was the ban on Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon, because the deck that I had during that time used Aurorodon as kind of a, as kind of an extender or a successor of some sort. So with Aurorodon gone, it took me a couple of formats and a handful of months to figure out what I want to do with Cyber Dragons again. And then we were introduced to Sprite, which honestly gave me newfound hope for the deck. Not that I'm saying that Cyber Dragons were never good or couldn't do well standing alone, it's just I prefer playing a part one, part two style of the deck where it was Cyber Dragon and then it was something else. So Sprite came along and it was generic enough for me to be able to play Sprites with Cyber Dragons and a lot of people are already aware of this. And even though I wanted to showcase the deck that I had, then there were two things preventing me from showing you what I had built. The first thing being that we were still waiting for our ban list, and I didn't know when that was going to come out, and I didn't want to showcase something only for the very next day, it being banned. Fun fact, at the time of this recording, nothing was banned. Well, something that wouldn't hurt me at least. The second thing was probably arguably the most Yu-Gi-Oh player-ish thing that I could have actually ever done, and I've done it before in a previous video, and I was almost going to do it again. And that was not realizing that I couldn't summon Totally Awesome using Sprite. Whoever thought that reading a card that says two level two aqua monsters would have made a world of difference. So when I stumbled across that, I went back into trying to figure out what I actually wanted to do with the deck. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is G.I. Go, put it together and it is pronounced Gigo. And today I'm going to showcase to you the deck profile that I came up with after so much time of figuring out figuring it out. Alrighty guys, so without wasting any more time, we're going to dive right into this deck profile. For starters, the main deck monsters, we have one copy of Cyber Dragon. I have three copies of Cyber Dragon Core. He's a fantastic starter, spell and trap searcher. Three copies of Cyber Dragon Hertz. He is a great um, recycling and Cyber Dragon searcher as well. And then I run two copies of Nashter. For the honorary Cyber Dragon, we should all know this by now, our famous two copies of Galaxy Soldier. You do have the option of running three. I think two is just fine. He's kind of like a one and done type deal. And then for uh, the last Cyber Monster, I have one copy of Cyber L Tannen. He's more of a utility than anything else. It's kind of like a, he's nice to have, but you can live without him. So you can definitely switch him out for anything else. For the rest of the monsters, I also run one copy of Therion King Regulus. And then for the Sprite engine, I have one Sprite Blue, two Jets, and then one Carrot. I rolled with the carrot instead of Sprite Red because I've already produced a lot of monster negation and so I wanted to uh, kind of balance out the negation scheme and so I thought having Sprite Carrot gives me an option uh, or an easy, easily accessible option to negate some back row uh, tactics. And then to top off the monsters, I run the staple of three copies of Ash Blossom, which I feel like is ran in every deck. For the spells, we showcase one copy of Terraforming and then one copy of uh, Therion Disc Coliseum. When you're playing Regulus, you play the field spell. Uh, the ratios are kind of up in the wind. It's really up to your preference. I personally prefer one Terraforming, two field spells, and then the one Regulus. Um, followed by 
three copies of Cyber Emergency, and then two copies of Cyber Repair Plant. Uh, some people run one copy. That's fine. It's entirely up to you. Um, I think I prefer to have two just because the option of being able to search comes up a lot. Um, and it's always great to have that kind of resource. We run one copy of Rev System, one copy of Cyberload Fusion, one Sprite Starter, one Sprite Smashers, and then one Foolish Burial. I, I run one of each of the Sprite stuff because in this deck, the Sprite engine is really just a one and done type deal. It's not really meant to prolong the game, especially if you only run one Elf. That's entirely up to you if you want to run additional Sprite cards. Um, but that's just my personal preference. The trap lineup is pretty much staple sentry except for one card, which is the cybernetic overflow. Um, for the rest of it, it's three copies of imperm, which is just another card that's in pretty much every deck. And then three copies of dark bribe. I wouldn't have three copies, but I physically don't. So there's three, uh, two copies and, and a proxy for now. Um, and then I totally know that this is all banged up and, and whatnot. I, you know, just had to make do with what I had access to. And uh, this is what I had access to. <laughs> so Dark Bribe is a little bit interesting. I wanted something to just do more than just remove back row. I wanted to negate back row without my opponent's ability to be able to respond to that kind of uh, level of negation. And Dark Bribe has actually came up a good handful of times. I've caught a good handful of people off guard with this card. Cards like Mystic Mind, Dark Ruler No More, Ultimate Slayer, cards that say that I can't respond using monster effects are cards that Dark Bribe is meant to help me deal with, especially with Forbidden Droplet being a card mostly used in this uh, current format. For the extra deck, we run the one copy of Infinity, one copy of Nova, one copy of Gigantic Sprite, one copy of Gin Buster, and then the one copy of Phantom Knights of Cursed Javelin. Honest opinion, I think I would probably tag this card out for a Zeus, but I don't have a Zeus. So he is there for now, uh, especially since uh, he, can he can negate the effects of a monster face up on the field, as well as make their attack zero. Uh, but that's only during my turn. Gin Buster is the totally awesome replacement. He can negate monster effects during either player's turn, and with that negation also comes along a 500 uh, life point burn. So uh, I think he's kind of like a great substitution, and he's also really easy to get out. So to actually exceed summon him, I would end up using Sprite Blue and Sprite Jet as the two level two dark monsters uh, to be able to get him out. For the Link lineup, we run one copy of Sprite Elf. Uh, for the longest time, I kind of considered two, but I think I'm good at settling with just one. One copy of Almirage, one copy of Seeger, one Phoenix, one Cerberus, and then one Lina the Light Charmer. Uh, the Nightmare Links are pretty much just options dependent upon what's going on on the board. And then same thing for the Lina, the Light Charmer. Just an option to go into, especially if I'm going turn two and if my opponents have lights in their grave, uh, then you can definitely benefit using her effects. So for the fusions, it's nothing special or different or unique. It's pretty much standard across the board for Cyber Dragons. I run the one copy of Fortress Dragon, one copy of Mega Fleet, one copy of Rampage Dragon, and then the one copy of Chimera Tech Over Dragon. I've debated about running uh, one Over Dragon or two Mega Fleet, so that's kind of up to you. If you guys have an opinion about it, I'd like, uh, I would love to hear it uh, down in the comment section below. So that is all that I have for you guys today. If you guys feel like there's something we can definitely do different with the deck, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I hope this deck profile has inspired some of you guys to try something new or something different with the uh, with the potential that the deck actually has. And of course, if you guys have any questions about the deck, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And also let me know if you guys like to see what the deck can actually put on a first turn board. And if you guys do one last thing, go ahead and hit the like button. It really helps the video out a lot and it helps the channel out with the YouTube hour. <laughs> It really helps this video out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And if you guys enjoy the video, consider subscribing.
So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one.